blank piece of paper. It has the power to represent a lot of things, but most of the time it is a sign of creative exhaustion and writer's block. At that point, some people choose to go for a walk, meditate, you know, just live and let the inspiration come to you. But inspiration has an ego problem. It does not stop by and say hi very often. Then you look at other sources for inspiration. In my case, those sources comprise of literature, video games, and paintings. And today I would like to elaborate on two of my go-to pieces of art that always rekindle my imagination, bringing me right back into that creative process and workflow. At first glance, it is very easy to be deceived by Mother 3's visuals and consider it to be nothing more than a childish RPG. But when you actually dive into this world, you will realize that the reality is very different from this assumption. I like to look at Mother 3 as a collection of stories, all connected together with the central theme of growing up. It's a game about becoming an adult, not just for the characters within the game, but for the player as well. If you are an aspiring artist, game designer or writer, there is a lot to learn here. Certain scenarios feel like a case study, demanding the players to ask questions. A good example of this is how the game approaches consumerism with the in-game NPCs buying a pink TV looking object called the Happy Box. The idea conveyed here is that the fictional village in which the game takes place changes abruptly after Facade tries selling happiness via these happy boxes. As a result, the people of Tasmali grow distant from each other and the charming simplicity of the village at the start of the game contradicts with the urban-esque look that it wears later on. In the former, the people of the village share and trade things with each other for free, money is not even a part of the equation. But fast forward later on, now you have to buy stuff with a DP currency. This might look like the writer of this game is very anti-technology, but I think the point he's trying to portray is that people eventually sacrifice their own happiness once they start searching for it. That search will only lead them to place their values on inanimated objects of which they can never get enough. Mother 3 is full of such commentaries that are thought-provoking and that is not the only part of the game that's inspiring. An artist could learn from the gorgeous pixel art present here. An animator can understand how adding personality to animations can bring them to life. A game designer can learn the benefits of pacing, crafting an exciting level structure that never gets boring. And a writer can learn how to tell a serious overall story that doesn't take itself too seriously. Now, 15 years later, Mother 3 remains a product beyond its time. Inspiring, creative, original, and unfortunately still officially unavailable. Nothing can ever be more inspiring and beautiful than nature. We can never capture its elegance perfectly. Best we can do is craft the impression it leaves upon us. Claude Monet was once such impressionist painter. Taking nature as a reference, he would fill the canvas with his imagination, focusing excessively on lighting and shadows. He would paint the same scene multiple times in hopes of catching changes in different seasons and light. Case in point, the Japanese drawbridge at the water lily pond. Speaking of which, his series of water lily paintings span over 20 years of him observing his personal flower garden. Sometimes he would even change the position of the plants in order to grant him a desired visual reference. All of this allowed him to be in a constant state of inspiration despite health issues.
What I like about his works is that they are standalone pieces of art. They are visual references, literally stored in time. They don't need context, they don't need a personally attached story to make sense and in most cases they don't have one. They are simple, elegant and evocative. I can write pages telling a story centered around just one particular painting. There is a lot to learn from the series of paintings here. Most importantly, it signifies your art doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be something grand or unusual. As long as you believe in your work and are passionate in the creation process, your art will eventually, in time, definitely find a home. And with that, my creative block is finally extinguished. I think I can finally finish writing this essay. Thank you so much for listening and give my regards to the next frog you meet.